welcome back to another tutorial and today we're going to be doing the moving poster or moving photo effect as seen in the uh, Harry Potter film and to do that we're going to be creating these assets so I'm going to quickly show you how to do one of them but it's very similar to the way we did the last tutorial the ink drop effect so if you've already seen that one um, you pretty much know how to do these asset creation if not I'm just going to show you it quickly um, I will leave a link in the description for the last tutorial so let's set the resolution size and to do so what we want to do is create a, an object so I started with a circle then extruded it out I scaled it to look a bit like a cauldron then we want to add some text with a modifier, a curve modifier on it and you want to add some details and then you can just uh, render that off so what we start with a black and white image and this is going to be the object that's going to be displayed on the poster so we save this off by pressing F3 save it somewhere and now what we do is add a um, particle system so behind this cauldron here there's a particle system which um, yeah it's just it okay so what we want to do is just isolate the bubbles the um, are coming out the cauldron and just render this off as an image sequence but we want to change it down here to transparent and set up where we want the um, image sequence to be the reason we do this is we don't want to be rendering the um, the cauldron and the writing for like 250 frames. It's pointless. It just adds time to the render. So if we just render this off as a image sequence. We just press anim animation. Uh, render it off as an image sequence. We can then open it as a new uh, open a new scene. And we can add them both together, and it saves a lot of time on the render. So again, to change the resolution back to what we set first change the nodes, use nodes, backdrop, let's delete this add in the image sequence we just created which is the cauldron bubbles and we're going to mix this with the image let's auto refresh, so yeah, you see it works fine so we just add and then mix Let's add in an image. So this way there's motion on the poster as well as the smoke that's going to affect it. So we just switch these around, check a box, and then it works fine. We need to multiply it since there's um, the bubbles are not just black, they're black and grey. So then you just add the rest, which is detail. So I add an image here, scale it. And this will um, add a bit of grunge to the cauldron. Just put an add. There we go. So then render this off as an image sequence. And again, make sure you set up your folder. Uh, you want to call it whatever you want. And then render that off as an image sequence. So then that will be the mask. So again, you can go and watch the tutorial um, I did last. How to do this step. So again, we're just going to set up the nodes. Change the resolution. load in the image sequence we just created and we're going to set up the folder first for the output and okay, now load in the image sequence and we should duplicate that so we can add in the smoke effect so the smoke effect I've got here um, it's very low resolution I've also got two new smoke simulations and um, if you want to download them feel free to do so there's a link in the description there are a lot higher quality resolution than this one here but I mean this one's very low resolution and it still works fine for me so I'm just going to scale it add a bit of blur and we're going to mix it with the original but use that as the factor and so it now displays we're just going to add an alpha over and the background image. Again, it's the same way as we did in the ink drop effect tutorial. There's no point in re explain it again. If you've already seen that one, you know what I'm talking about. If not, go back and see it. And just add in the image. Okay, mix these over and there we go. So we just change the colour of this to whatever you want. If it looks a bit too washed and faded, too washed out, you can re-add in the background texture with another mix node. 
but uh, for this effect, this, this poster here, I, I think that works fine. Just lower down the opacity. And then add in the rest of the nodes that you want to make it look a bit better. So once you've rendered out that as an image sequence, um, or a movie clip, whichever you want, um, we can move on to this next step. Now this here is a movie, well the stock footage, and it's just very bland. It's got a bit of green screen on it with some markers. We're going to use this now to create the first shot that you've seen. So we're going to select the start and end frames and prefetch. Um, choose a few of these settings here. We're not going to be creating a 3D scene. We're just going to use the the, um, the markers to uh, create a planar tracks. So it's very simple. We're just going to put a few down here. Also, you can track things on the wall um, like this, bits of grit and dirt in the wall, and most of it will work. You will need to check it, go through it uh, frame by frame, or scrub through the frames and just make sure they're not um, sliding or anything. So yeah, just, just add forward and backwards. I mean, you can add as many markers as you want. It depends on how many posters you want to fit on the wall. The more markers you add, the better. check them, make sure they don't slide. And when you're happy with that, we want to uh, solve them. So select keyframe, solve camera motion, and 0 0.3562 is not too bad. Um, the camera, the focal length is obviously wrong. I'm not sure what I shot this in, so I'm just going to refine the focal length. The distortion is perfect, so we don't need to do that. The, uh, it's, as long as it's 0 0.03, it should still work. So what we need to do now is just make the planar tracks. So the way to do this, we jump to the first frame and you select four markers, so any four markers you want. They don't have to be squared off like this, but they help. So come up here to planar track, create planar track. And you see how it's added um, a mask? It's a squared mask. So you come here to the side panel, close a few of these, and it says plane track. Let's name this PT1. Depends if you're going to add more than one, then obviously you want to name them so you don't get confused what you're putting in later on in the nodes. So just scale this out so it's big, as big as you want. You see it sticks there, fine. So when you've had one of them done, we just select another four different markers. And they don't, again, they don't have to line up as long as the four of them there, that's fine. We create the track, and then it's adding a new one. So we just scale this to where we want it. So make sure you name the track PT2. We just add one more. See, there's not well, them three will work, but we could do with one more. So I'm just going to go back and add an extra marker around here. This one should work fine. Okay, probably going to need to resolve it just in case. Okay, and then we want to select these four again. And then create. So you want to make it take a bit more time than I did, but um, to get a better result. But I mean, I think that works fine, as you've seen in the, the preview. I think it works fine. Again, knowing the actual focal length as well will help. But um, I can't remember which focal length I shot in on this. So I think it was twenty nine point eight. But again, the, the track does it on its own. So once you've got them, you need to jump to the node editor use nodes, delete the render layer, and we're going to input the image sequence we just used. Again, you can download this uh, stock footage if you want, it's link in description, or you can use your own. Make sure you auto-refresh. And let's just move these about. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is add in a colour, oh, sorry, a saturation, hue and saturation. And we're going to lower this saturation down. And the reason we do this is because we're going to boost the shadows um, and we're going to add another hue saturation, completely desaturate it. And then add in a mix and mix them both together. But we're going to use soft light. So already it makes a big difference. And add a colour balance in. I'm going to make it look grungy and a bit more darker. That works fine. 
So there's a difference from the original to just a little tiny bit of grading. Let's add a mix. Let's put the image uh, image sequence, and this is going to be for the the um, the posters we created. So just duplicate it three times, well two times, because there's going to be three posters. So let's just check auto refresh, and now we want to put in a planar track. Yeah, so just type in plain track deform. I can't remember where it is, so just type in plain track deform. That's going to go into the mix. We also check the click the checker box and then load in the footage. Now we want to select the camera and then the track name itself. So now whatever we plug into the black input um, will be displayed. So as you see on the planar track, that'll work fine. So we just want to add the rest of them now, so it's very simple. We just copy uh, copy the mix twice and then load in the movie clips or the image sequence, whatever you prefer to use. And duplicate the track deform and just change the tracks to the PT2 and 3. Plug them in, there you go. And once you're happy with the tracks, then it's just a case of adding in some uh, color grading and just uh, finishing the scene. With the motion blur here, it does um, sell the scene, but I wouldn't put it on, turn it on too soon. Just make sure you uh, add your color grading first. Then for the uh, final, just add the motion blur. Okay, so the, the second shot we're working on is very simple. It's just a CG scene, it's a 3D scene. So what we're going to do is start with a plane, which is going to be the wall. Um, scale it up, add a texture, this is just going to be a close placeholder for now. We'll come back and finish the textures off. So add a new plane and this is going to be the poster. So there's two different sizes, there's the A4 size and then there's the more squared size. So I'll do the first one. Just do it by eye. And duplicate it and scale it up. There we go. So just add a texture for this and this. Make sure you select image where it says colour. And what we want to do is subdivide it a few times because we're going to add some curls to the pages. So subdivide them both. And the way we do this is in um, a previous tutorial I've done, which is the turning pages. It's actually the first tutorial on this channel. Um, so if you want to go back and check that, if not, it's just a very quick way. We're going to add a lattice and then add a modifier to the lattice to um, displace it. So let's just add a simple deform. Select bend. Now we want to add in an empty plane axis. And let's select the empty the lattice again to select the axis as the empty, and then choose the angle you want. So if you want to check the other tutorial out, there'll be a link in the description. Um, it goes into more detail on how to do this effect, but it's very simple. So we're going to add it down, put it in place. So now on with the uh, the page selected, we're going to add a modifier, which is a lattice. Select the lattice as the modifier, and there you go. You can uh, curl the page as much as you want. I'm just going to add the texture to it first before we start bending it. So these are going to be the image sequences that we created. Again, you can mo use movie clips, but I find well, Blender definitely works better with image sequences. So once that's loaded in, uh, we don't see it here. So let's unwrap. Still don't see it. If we render it now, we will see. I'm just the the 3D render. The 3D view doesn't show it for some reason. Let's add in a sun. That'll probably help. Ah, oh, there we go. Right, so that works fine. Um, let's do the same for this one. Make sure you unwrap it. Okay. So yeah, they both look fine. Okay. So what I do is make sure they both got auto refreshed on, just in case you want to keep seeing it refreshed. And now. Um, yeah, we're going to add some curls 
to the pages. The way we do that, we should we just put it in position and scale the angle as much as you want. You can scale it on the, the axis. There we go. Make sure you select smooth and also an edge modifier just in case. And that's just a case of duplicating the, the pages and uh, adding the new textures for your different posters and adding the curls to it. So, yeah, let's just do the pages. Let's set the textures up. We just want to press number two to make it its own user and then just add new textures for them all. Depends how many assets you created. I mean, I think I went, I got a little bit carried away creating them. Um, but yeah, you can make as many as you want. So then finally for the wall, we've got a texture. I used the original image for the from the video clip we we had, and then I just in Photoshop I just made it bigger. And also using Crazy Bump, we're going to need the normal map for it. So if you've not used Crazy Bump before. Um, definitely go and check that out or use any kind of program you want to uh, create their normal map so we're just going to subdivide this because we're going to add the normal in a second let's scale this up okay so we're just going to add the lattice again for each of these and put a few different curls on the corners of the pages Again, you want to be as varied as you as you can. You don't want them all to look exactly the same. That's why we're doing the um, the curls on them now rather than later. So I'm just going to go through these and do these dead quick. So when you've finished all your pages, you just want to arrange them. You see if some um, textures are clipping or you know cutting through the textures, make sure you move them out of the way. And the reason why we've moved the wall away from the posters for now is because we're going to add a modifier. Well, we're going to add a modifier now, which is a, a displace. And that's why we did the normal texture. So to do this, if you've never used a displace modifier before, it's very simple. We've, as long as it's mod um, subdivided, we can then come here to the modifier, select a new texture, go to the texture panel. Select Displace Texture here, and then open the one that we created. So remember where you created it. Again, if you've never used Crazy Bump, it's very simple. Just put in your image, and it will create this f a few more images for you. So now it's kind of working. And um, what we need to do is come here to the strength. So it's always going to be too much. Um, just check that's fine. Yeah, uh, you can also add a subdivision because it's still not enough. And one more maybe. Maybe another one. Okay, you don't want to kill your computer as long as it's just enough to cover the bricks. So now, obviously, it's still looking a bit wrong. So we need to apply the scale from when we sca um, scaled it up. So it's Control A, and then press Scale. And there you go. So again, you can lower down the strength or increase it wherever you want, make it look a bit more rough. Um, I think that works fine. Point. Two, four. Yeah, that should work okay. So now just double check it again, make sure the bricks are not clipping. And there you go. Just add some um, colour grading and finish the shot. So I hope this tutorial helped. If it did, give it a like. And uh, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials.